Venka Trump. She's a professor in Eastern European Studies at the University of Amsterdam. So it has been 30 years of this. The crime, that's when the crimes were committed. Uh, they were originally indicted back in 2003. Then they went through this first trial. But why does it take so long for justice to be served? Um, this is the question that I think everyone on the streets of Bosnia and Herzegovina and from Yugoslavia is asking himself or herself. And you know, in English, they say uh, justice delayed is justice denied. And in this case, there was no really a concrete reason why these individuals uh, were indicted first in 2003 and that we had to wait for such a long time to have this sentence, which is even not the final one. The parties after this sentence still have the right to appeal. So we might be waiting for another two, three years for this case to, to, uh, to come to a closure. And of course, when you listen to this, even just today, if that's all you heard, to hear the judge list massacre after massacre, it brings back all of these terrible memories from this time. And even to this day, for example, Serbia does not officially recognize Kosovo as a separate country. What are the obstacles that remain in this region? Well, many questions for, for your viewers uh, to hear answer for. But just, if you allow me, I will go back to Semir Sejvovic from Sarajevo, from Sarajevo said, I completely understand his first reaction to the judgment when he said the, the, the victims feel some sort of relief now that this, this uh, sentence uh, led to, uh, to, to a verdict of uh, 12 years of imprisonment. But if, if you really go back to the principal notions of justice, is it really reflection, this sentence, the wording in the judgment and the, and the verdict, uh, the crimes that we heard judge uh, mentioning and listing? First of all, if you look uh, concretely what the verdict is about, from all crimes on the territory of Croatia, starting from April 91, over to Bosnia until December 95, they were found guilty for aiding and abetting paramilitary groups on a territory of very small Bosnian town in northern Bosnia, Bosnianski Shamats. So it is actually the minimum of the minimum that judges could have done. Basically, if one is very honest, this is completely a repetition from the acquittal of 2013, with this small little stepping out to actually make a compromise towards the victims so that victims could say, well, mm -hmm. after all, justice has been served. So I think that is extremely meager outcome when it comes to the role, very important role these two individuals had in implementation of a criminal plan that was conceived in Belgrade under the regime of Slobodan Milosevic and that led to grave mass atrocities on the territory of Croatia, Bosnia and Herzegovina and Kosovo. And now that you mention Kosovo, Stanisic was, Jovica Stanisic was sacked by Milosevic before the conflict in Kosovo started. But Franko Simatovic led his units to yet another campaign of crimes on the territory of Kosovo, but the prosecution never included Kosovo crimes in the indictment. So based on indictment, I think they fared quite well, but more than that, Belgrade and Serbia fared very well because all these crimes happened, but there is no direct connection to Belgrade and to individuals in Belgrade for planning and executing the crimes in three consequent wars in the 90s. Excellent points. Nivanka Trump, thank you for that.